there is a pause, pause in between the way to the tree of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Or let me say to life. So uh, when you walk with God, what you will gather is the knowledge of life. So I can call the tree of life the knowledge of life. Just like the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is also a tree of death. Yeah. Or tree of death means the knowledge of good and evil. So tree of life means the knowledge of life. Yeah. I believe God does use uh, just explain or define the tree of death to us in that verse as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So that we can know that trees means knowledge itself. Please look. But well, there is no tree you will see if you don't see a fruit. Hallelujah. That makes the tree to be her life. That, okay, if you see a tree, no fruit, no flower, how are you going to divide the tree? But it is the flower or the fruit, especially, especially the fruit, that will make you to differentiate a tree from a tree. Or else, you cannot. So, it is the fruit that makes uh, the tree to have a definition of life. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, now, after I joined into the book, after I was balanced, you know, uh, the book says, just confess, know yourself as righteousness of God. That's all. The book never, uh, for once, uh, but tries Righteousness, it never buttresses your work with God. You just say you are the righteousness of God through Christ, and that's it. So, as long as the grace of God is with you, then you have access to grace. But the book never mentioned uh, the content of grace. The content of grace itself. What are the things in grace? What is grace all about? Or merited favor. Favor of what? What are the contents in that favor? That is what I want to address. I want what, what, how many times? How many times? Okay. Yes. Hallelujah. So now let's. In Isaiah 6, verse 3. So let me start from verse 1. It says, In the year that, that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another Holy. Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. Mm -hmm. The whole heart is full of His glory. So now, what holiness means is pureness, flawless, uh, clean or clear. Hallelujah. Anything that is 100% accurate. Let's say the knowledge of God, but you've not accessed that knowledge. Hallelujah. What God has done, but we not have access to it. That is what holiness means. His thought is pure. 
His fullness is, 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 is about light. What you can see. Hallelujah. What has been made that you more has access? That is what holiness means. You can see? He said, the whole heart is full of his glory. So, he, the whole heart is full of his glory. Then, then, no matter how scientists have done some uh, lab works into so many plants and animals and so many things, <laughs> they've not even started assessing God, the spiritual parts of everything that God has made. So, uh, everything that God has made has spiritual background. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, and the heart is uh, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So, before you, before you can access the knowledge of God, he was forced to be holy. So, when Bible says, Noah has walked with God, he has walked and has become holy. So, there is a path from the starting point to the processing path to what I mean purification or edification or refining. When God has refined, he has tuned you to himself so that you can now start with my architectural design. Bible says, unless the Lord builds this house, yes, this house means our God, which is the temple of God, which, which was what Jesus did on the, on the cross. Amen. But if you want to elaborate that verse, we can say, unless the Lord builds this heart itself, this heart, this whole heart, he that built it, the scientists, the, all those people that are walking, they are just doing it in vain. They are just doing vain things. They are doing what? Vain things. Vanity, ungodliness. They are doing things that is outside the will of God. They are doing things that are not godly. So unless the Lord build this house, and can only build this house through the manifestation of sons, until sons become sons. <laughs> so the Bible says, even he was so, it means that even Jesus became holy. So it is when you now know, is a walk between righteousness and holiness. That work will make you to become son. So it, it was not just like a, Noah who was a red righteous man. He was also he became pure. He became pure as a ready for the service of God. That was why. The first commandment to Noah was to go and build her. Because before you can become blamelessness or blameless, that one is high of holiness. It's like he has done, he has, God has committed something in his hands and he has done it. He has served God. You know, Bible says if you cannot, uh, if you cannot, come, if you cannot, uh, if you cannot handle small projects, how can we commit uh, larger or bigger responsibility into your hands? So let me start from like this. 
the God says, uh, pray now. Okay, let me use this example. Somebody, at least you don't know the person. So, and if the person see this thing, I'm sorry, I'm not mentioning your name, but about to, the Spirit of God put it in my heart to use it. But at least you know yourself, or don't be offended, don't take it personal. Now, the person wanted me to be an admin of his group. Because he was busy. One group. And I said, let me tell you. The Bible says, let me, let me put that scripture. The way I want to, I just want to say exactly how the Bible put it. If you cannot, if you cannot handle uh, small things, how can you? Yes, if you are not faithful with the little, if you are not faithful with the little, how? Will you be faithful with much? So sometimes God will be telling you in your own corner to do this. Okay, let me give like this. If you're the kind of person that God wants to teach you how to give, Luke 16, verse 10. Luke 16. Verse 10. Yeah. Who, whoever can be trusted with very little can only be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little. We also be dishonored with much. Okay, let me read this in another version. It has said to in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. This is another version that I'm looking for now. Which version did you use? So one who is faithful in the least of he said, how can God commit? Yes, yeah, so that's the way. So if you are not, you have not been faithful with worldly wealth, who will entrust you with true riches? Yes. If therefore ye have not been faithful in unrighteous manner, hmm, who will commit to your trust the true riches? You can see. So now, unrighteous manner, let's say you are walking, you are walking. You are working for your boss. But God is still demanding that or oh, okay, let me put like this. You are working for your boss. You are doing you are collecting salary, yes. But you are not faithful in 
the job descriptions or in the mode of operations. So, and but the eyes of God is watching you. I can even use Noah as an example. So he must have worked with God. He was a righteous man. He started being, uh, he started at a point before the path or the spot before the way that leads to the tree of life. He started at that point. Here's a point. Here's a path. Here's a point. Amen. That you, everyone, must start with God. So, and he walk. So, to me, to walk with God means that you have to walk on that. When you become a righteous man, you must walk on the way and get to the tree of life. Amen. Getting to the tree of life, you must now access life. Amen. It is when you access life, you now become a blameless man. Amen. But when you are walking, they are changing your thoughts. Mm -hmm. They are changing your feelings. Mm -hmm. They are changing uh, the will, the way you do things, your actions, your motives. They are changing you internally. That is what it means to walk. So you become holy. Then you start in continuing the walk from holiness to blamelessness. Hallelujah. So, uh, let's say Noah has done something with God. Hallelujah. Apart from the spirit of God, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Which wisdom? The wisdom of God. So, the only thing the people in the Old Testament has is the fear of the Lord. Because they want to have the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. So you can fear God. But right now in our whole time, as long as you confess and believe, you become born again. You don't need to fear God. Just, you can see that's why I see that the same mode but different approach. From the time man fell, people have been walking with God. But the only way to walk with God is the fear, to fear God. But since Jesus came and died and left, just confess and believe in your heart that you don't need to fear God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's just the approach, but the same walk. Christ in the Old Testament is still Christ right now. Hallelujah. Amen. But the only thing is that the approach of entry into Christ differs. Amen. If you understand the tabernacle of Moses, you know that it's still the same Christ in the New Testament. Because you become righteousness of God, you start from the outer courts. The same outer courts, then you get to the holy place. That's why they call it holy place. Like I was trying to say, between the past or the spot, you become born again, you become a righteous man. That part is like entry into Christ. You are you enter into the door. You are not in front of the door. Praise the Lord. You are not in front of the door. But you already enter. I say I'm the way. So through the way you enter, but you are not at the front. You are in front of the door. In Christ. So there's a way between the old outer courts where you enter. It is when you enter that you now see yourself in the outer courts. From the outer courts, you must journey into the holy place. So from the outer courts, there's a path you must journey, and there's a spot on that on that way. Hallelujah. That spot is what is called holy place. When you get to the holy place, you begin to access things. So, now, Noah was not just a righteous man. 
He was a blameless man. He has even finished the holy. He has gotten to life. He has gotten to the most holy place. It is when you access the most holy place, that's the only thing that will make you blameless. So you can be righteous only and still have faults. How? You are already pure. It means that now you become holy. This is the time I can use you. God wants that we all of us become holy so that uh, we we'll never consider our whole thing. It's like it's like they arrest somebody and put chain or put handcuff in his hands. He cannot he cannot move his hands the way he wants. They put chain on his leg. He cannot move his leg the way he wants. He cannot say he wants to play football. They chain him. That's why Paul always called himself a prisoner of God of Christ. You know somebody that you know, you know physically you don't see chains on his legs on his arms and he still calling himself prisoners. It means that he has been he has been he has become holy. It's the time that he wants to serve God because God wants you to serve Him like instruction to instruction. Do my instructions exactly. It's just like you give somebody you give you are the CEO you are the uh, director of your company. You give a manager to do a task for you. And you want it to do it exactly how it's been planned. Don't add your ideas. Don't do it. Just do it exactly. So you expect that the money that comes back to you with no excuse, you have to do it exactly. Don't say, hey, oh, uh, sorry, when I got uh, this thing, uh, I supposed to, uh, you said when I get here, I should take 200 pounds. Oh, I'm sorry, I was hungry, so I don't have extra money. I have to take 300. No, you have to do it exactly as is being instruction. That was why Jesus, despite that he was a son, as he has become holy, his thoughts has been fine tuned, his uh, motive has changed, everything in his soul has become Christ. His mind has been renewed to the mind of Christ. So you must do everything. Don't add your thoughts to it. That is why it's good. That is why God wants every righteous man to be holy. That is what gives the grace that uh, will, will change you. And there is also a grace that will help you to walk 100% accurate with God in the area of service. But the problem we are having is that when we have grace or we access grace, we have access the knowledge of God and we become holy. Wow, God is so sweet. Though you pass through so many delays, you suffer a lot of things. And you not you not become a refined man. You become what holy. Then we now believe that it is that access, that stress that we have that we need within us. That is the only thing. It's like it's like you got that experience, experiential knowledge. You have knowledge of God experientially. Do, so because of that, you don't need the grace again. It's like you've taken the grace, you now cut yourself from. That is what that is why many ministers of God or many sons of God are still for you. As somebody said, you need a ladder to climb to the top. That when you get to the top. Don't say, yeah, I'm at the top of the wall. Then you now throw the ladder that you don't need it again. Who told you? So that's why many people are falling. Because they because believe that they have access grace. They have, it's like you have 
uh, water in a bowl. You've drank enough water. And you think like, I don't need to carry this water again. So you now pour on the left the buckets. As you cut your signal from from the grace you still have in the buckets. Like at least I have the grace of God now. I don't need it. No. Even if you finish drinking the whole water, you still in the buckets. Go with the buckets. So grace is like a bucket and the water. Both grace is both the bucket and the water. So don't drink the water and throw off the bucket. No. Grace means both the container and the content. But in Ephesians 1 3, he explained only all the contents without the container. Spiritual blessings. In Christ Jesus. So we can say the container is Jesus. But what size, what we refer to, what we need. Is the spiritual blessings. We don't want to bother about the Christ Jesus. So, most times, if we want to access the spiritual blessings without, we just, we are just interested in the spiritual blessings. That's why you see some people, you see sons becoming. A uh, joker or begin to do drugs in the body of Christ because they believe they have they have grown up with drug the spiritual blessings, with drug the water. We don't need the container any longer. That is the problem. They believe that I have gathered strength, I have strength of God within me. Hallelujah. But see what Isaiah 6 said. That's why that the Lord God. What? Lord means order. Uh, holiness means uh, the knowledge of God. Or the knowledge of Christ. Or the knowledge of God. If he says Lord God Almighty, he's talking about the Father. He says Lord God, if sometimes say Lord God, sometimes say all Lord God Almighty. Capital L, the remaining small letter, letters, is talking about the Son. But the two of them are God or God. The two of them together is one God. Hallelujah. But another means you see the Godhead. It's like say, okay, my name is. My son name is Sabudru. I have a name called Israel. But my son name is Sabudru. So if you are seeing me, my wife, and my son together, we are what? Sabudru. So we are one Sabudru. We all of us have a name. So the two of them is God. They have the nature of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why the Bible says, God lives in an in, uh, immortal life and is unapproachable. Or God lives in unapproachable life. So that's God who is the three of them. And where these three are, no one can get here. But uh, true Christ. We can get to the Godhead. 
Are you getting it? Through Christ. So let me see. Let me explain now. There is a portion of grace in the Holy Spirit. There is are all spiritual blessings in Christ. There is also uh, the spiritual blessings in the Godhead. That says, no, when Jesus says, no one can get to my father except by me. See that by the time you accumulated Christ, then he will lead you to his father. Hallelujah. So now, grace, grace is uh, the content and the container together. If you don't access grace, then you can have grace like water, a full uh, pail of water, full pail of water that you've not drank a cup from it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the Bible says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. He said, the whole heart is full of his glory. So, my point is, you can become holy. But don't say, because you are righteous, holy in the sight of God. That's the end. Then you can start doing your own thing. Grace has covered you. God didn't save you to be doing your own thing. He saved you to be doing his own thing. Anyone that is putting grace as God has covered you so that you can start doing your own thing. I mean, you start doing your own projects. Hallelujah. Even, let me tell you, the glory of God must must uh, must be known through the work of our hands. But, see, it's still the same what I'm saying. It's still the same alias. Let me explain. Doctor, engineer, all those kind of pilots. It's still the same thing that God wants to use us for. But he must access that grace that is his own. Maybe you are a carpenter. But God wants you to be uh, what what is to do? Uh, can make you work in a higher, like maybe in a construction company. Hallelujah. So now, if you don't access the glory, see that glory of God is. Another higher level of grace. But you must access Christ. You must access Christ before you can access glory. But you must have master obedience. Before you can let obedience. This is a measure of Obedience, you must be able to handle in Christ. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yes, this is the way we teach you leading that you must follow and obey. But see, the way you will learn by what you suffer, that one is not just leading. You are already in it. You know, leading is like you are doing your own thing. They led you here. Then, when you've done what God wants you to do, you go back to your own thing. You start doing. They let you, before they can lead you to something, it means that you are doing your own thing. So that's the way you master obedience by leading. 
But when you now get to level like they now you have to now learn obedience itself. <laughs> Let me tell you, you cannot be doing your whole thing any longer. You are already in that school itself. And that time they must have removed self from him. So you can see what I'm addressing today is not about uh, just the praise of God. At that time, the praise of God is in your house. It's not like he's coming or he's going or he's just staying beside you or not. No. This world is, is your house. It's like a simple place. Hallelujah. At that time, <laughs> everyone will see the glory of God. There are things you will say that people around you cannot think of it. It's not logical. Hallelujah. Amen. So, grace help you to walk to become a holy man. It will not also help you to know God. No one can come to the Father Except by me, where? Except life. You cannot get to eternal life unless you pass through life. So, life is the door in between the holy place and the most holy place. Why? Uh, truth is the door in between uh, the holy place and the outer court. Why? The way is the door in between the outer court and the world. So if Jesus said, I am the way, and he's just saying, I am the those portals, those passes, those passage between the world. So if Jesus said, I am the way, say, I am the way from the world you are coming from to the house of God. I am the way. I am the truth from the house of God to the holy place. This is the door called the truth that you must go. And I am the life between the holy place and the most holy place, another door that you must pass through. That is Jesus. Now, the Christ, the Christ is the how that court, holy place, and the most holy. This is Christ as one. This is three in one. Also, so, so let me see, let me tell you that you cannot access Christ. Without Jesus, that's why two must become one. That's why Jesus became the Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let's say this room now. We have okay, we have an entrance door from the house side into this place. I don't know if it's that, we have three doors. Hey guys, so from the house side, let's say the house side is the world. Oh, I confess Jesus uh, with my mouth and I believe in that Jesus God raised me from the dead, I am saved. Immediately, you are in the outer house. Are you getting it? Why? Because that access, that way, God has opened it on the cross through, his blood, through the blood of Jesus. So, but everybody cannot enter into it. Though it's an open Door. Yeah? Uh, but don't forget the Bible says the message of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing. So the door is so good, but they cannot see it. The door doesn't even have meaning for them, they cannot even enter. How you guessing? So that's the second door here. Is that place is the house of this place is the only place. So Jesus is also the truth. So you must lay hold of that truth before. 
Are you getting it? From the outer truth. And the way to lay out on that truth is what? Is uh, the washing of your hands and the washing of your legs. That was how what priest does when they um, uh, killed the lamb that was slain. Praise the Lord. So they will clean their hands and they will put their head on the uh, lazy bas bas basin and, and um, basin um, las lasa, lava, what do they call it? This. But you wash your hands on those. Uh, let me quickly check it. It's in Exodus. I don't want to. I want to say it exactly how it's been said. It's called, you can call it uh, bronze lever or lever of brass. Mm -hmm. So, uh, lever means bathing. Oh, God bless. But so, so this in French, it means wash. <laughs> so, lever means wash. So, is that a, you? If it's a place where you wash your hands or you wash your legs. Washing of legs is means how you use the word of God to walk to for how to understand the word of God in the area of using faith. Using faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh also your hands they use the word of God. So for you to be uh, uh to know how to use the word of God. Praise the Lord. So, uh, bronze la lava or lava of brass. It's of brass. So, they use, when they uh, kill the uh, lamp, then you must wash your hands. You cannot enter the holy place like that. So, you must. But, you know, as they turn into religious, thing, why people just come and wash their hands and enter? No, it's not like that. But in the in the uh, understanding of Christ, you must know how to use the word of God and how to walk with the measure of faith. That's why it's a measure. It's what you can handle. It's the kind of faith you can handle. That's why most people at that time, they still they are relying on ministers of God to help them pray, to help them fast. They will get the level fast and say, okay, I want you to start praying also. Pray, I will do a backup prayer for you, but also pray. You start giving responsibility. By the time, in the beginning, if the pastor says, fast three days, he will forget it, he won't fast. He won't even remember. Maybe after two weeks, he will remember, ah, pastor said. But so, at that time, they will, they will teach you how to walk with faith. They will teach you faith, because that's what they used to bring you in. They will teach you confession. Uh, you should start confessing the word of God. Sometimes they tell you to uh, read Psalms because the only thing that is called life to you, the Bible says life and death is the power of thought. So the only thing that is called life to you is to speak life. So, because that is the only, that, is, that was what you said. This is the important thing you said to come to Christ. So when you get to Christ in the heart of God, that is what they will teach you. They will just expand it in the way that it will become part of you. Praise the Lord. But don't now say because now you are in the kind of presence of God, then the only thing throughout you, throughout your journey in Christ, the only thing you know or the only thing you believe is uh, to confess, uh, to confess scriptures and to what? And to cram scriptures. It's not. 
That is not what holy, it makes you balanced. That is what the book uh, taught us. It makes you to be balanced, it makes you to be conscious of yourself in Christ. And but it doesn't say that you should keep sinning, you should keep uh, fornicating, just be confessing that you are righteousness of God. Whatever you do, doesn't matter. Whatever you do, whatever you commit, if you like go away, like go and sleep, or go and smoke, or go and um, start doing your own thing, just believe that you are righteousness of God, it doesn't work that way. It's only work in the outer courts. It's just the portion of grace that is a portion to you in the outer courts. But if anybody is teaching you that whatever you do is it's, it's not, uh, it is not, uh, by strength, let no man prevail, or it's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the Spirit of God. Even at that time, you still don't have the Spirit of God. <laughs> you know, you know what is called the Spirit of God. Let me tell you today, maybe one of these will explain this thing. The Spirit of God and the Spirit of the Lord in Isaiah 11, they are two different things. It's just like you say Christ is of three ways. How that God's only ways are the most holy. But don't say things that Christ is just in one classroom. Even in this country, the standard university, the standard years of going to university is three years. <laughs> the standard is three years. It's only in Africa you can use six five years in the university. But yeah, the standard is three years. That's why also in Christ, the standard is three classes. I'm not saying three years, three classes. Three. I just want to mention the word three. So we have the outer court, the only place that they Three. Three classes. Hallelujah. Because every year is a class in any university. One year is in one, one year is one level. If you are not a level, it takes uh, 12, 12 months. So a level takes 12 months. Twelve level. And you don't repeat, you only carry. It's only secondary school that you repeat the class. But in the university, you carry the course into another class. Hallelujah. So, uh, uh, but what is about Christ is, you don't carry. You stay here. If you don't pass, you are not going. You won't repeat the class. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you can stay in outer courts for 10 years. That was what happened to the children of Israel in the, in the, in the, in the wilderness. Because they don't see where God is taking them. They kept turning and, you know, being sacked you for 40 years. You can't repeat. You can't scarry. But that class, they will extend. As long as until you learn what God wants you to learn, you are not going. But the problem is now is that uh, they are teaching us the book that's supposed to be a blessing to us is now becoming uh, especially for people who are not ready to join into the book like I did. They just want to read the balance and just feel good. So anything they do is okay. As long as they keep confessing that they are right, let me tell you, you are just in the house of us and you only live here. But God wants you to walk. He wants you, he wants to conform you to his will. Because we learn what we are claiming as our will, we learn it from the world. We grew up. We come, we were conformed to that will that's not us. When we conform to that will, it became us. So we start claiming our will. But when God created you, you don't have a will. You don't have a choice. But what God wants you to have as your will is Christ. Because Christ is the will of God. And if God doesn't want you to have just Christ in the heart of course, He must have Christ. He said, who can, who shall ascend? So you can be in heart of course and not ascending. Who shall ascend to the holy place? Holy place is still the same holy place in that tabernacle. He will have clean hearts. Clean hands. And clean hands and pure hearts. You can see. So it is in the holy place that you now become, they will now refine you, they you, it will purify you until you become.